Adam, and I am delighted to welcome you to Rosenberg First. We exist to love Jesus, connect with others, serve the world, and reach the lost. And I'm so excited that you joined us in worship today. We want to know that you are here. And so if you're here in person, I'd ask that you would grab one of the attendance pads at the center of the aisle and fill out that information. If this is your first time with us, I'll let you know that if you give us a phone number, I'll give you a call. If you give us an address, I'll send you a note. And if you give us your email, we will add you to our email list. Emails go out every Thursday afternoon. If you're joining us online, a special welcome to you. We'd love to know that you are here, so please leave a comment so that we can greet you. Well, we've got a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, our first announcement is for our youth. Next Sunday, we are going to stay after worship and uh, make some pizza. We are going to have a lovely little pizza party and then head on our way to an escape room. So that information went out in Thursday's email. There's the QR code to sign up. Uh, we look forward to that. I was talking with the youth this morning about what kind of toppings they need for their pizza. So it is going to be a good time, and we hope that our youth will be there. The next announcement is one that's a little bit different. It came across uh, my email desk, and I thought I will share this with the congregation because it has been a valuable resource to me, a valuable practice to me, and so I want to share it with you. On August 26th, next slide, Pastor. There you go. On August 26th, there is going to be a live online workshop with J.D. Walt. He is the curator of the Wake Up Call, a daily devotional that I encourage you to participate in when I first started. I'll lift it up to you again. Uh, but he's going to do a workshop that evening about how to keep a word and spirit journal. How do we read scripture and journal our thoughts and let God speak to us through that? So if that's something that would be uh, helpful to you in your spiritual journey as you're moving forward, if you feel God calling you to a deeper commitment to scriptural study, then I would lift this up to you. It's going to be a great opportunity for you to learn from J.D. Uh, and also uh, to, to dig deeper into the Word of God. Well, with that, friends, let's turn our hearts and minds to the worship of the Lord.
read from David's words in Psalm 139. Please stand as you're able and read responsibly the words that are on the screen. God created our inmost being. God so we praise God. We know full well that God's work is wonderful. God made us and calls us home. Let us pray. Creator God, you made each one of us gather here today, and you called each of us here today to participate in this service. Help us give you all honor and glory. May our words and thoughts be pleasing to you. As you call us closer, stir in us a desire to be what you need to reach others. In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, who invites us all homeward. Amen. Our opening hymn is Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. You can find the music on page 348 or the lyrics on the screen. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
Please be seated. Today our affirmation of faith is going to look a little different and begin something new. One of the exciting things about our affiliation with the Global Methodist Church is that they have a catechism. Catechism is a Latin word for teaching. This teaching is a series of 77 questions, answers, and supporting scriptures that clarify our beliefs. The Catechism provides us with a scriptural baseline or starting point for our spiritual life together. Throughout the fall, we're going to move through the Catechism during the Affirmation of Faith. The lay reader will read the questions and the congregation will read the answers. Some of the questions and answers may be very familiar to you, and some may evoke your curiosity. To assist in our journey through the Catechism, there are postcards at both entrances that have the reading plan and a QR code to access the questions, answers, and scriptural references on the Global Methodist Church's webpage. Or, if you would prefer a paper copy, let Pastor Wendy know. She has several copies to give away. I have all the questions here. And I'd like you to stand and read questions one through six responsibly, responsibly with me. You'll read everything in bold. We believe in one God. I'm sorry. You'd like to stand. So that pass. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Do you believe in God? Yes, I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Who is God? God is the one true. What is the mystery of the Trinity? God, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He saved by the Sacrament, eternally one, the and power. How is God Almighty? God is infinite in power, wisdom, justice, goodness, and love. What is God's relation to heaven and earth? God is Creator, Sovereign, and Preserver. How does God rule heaven and earth? God rules the gracious regard, the glory, the salvation of all, to the glory of the same. This is what I believe.
gathered together today in this place knowing that there are millions of others around the world gathered together today to praise God, the creator of all things. And so let's join together in a moment of prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you are holy, you are set apart. There is none like you. And we come today to worship you, to pour out our hearts in praise to you. God, we thank you for all that you have blessed us with. We thank you that we have homes and food and clothing. God, we thank you for those simple blessings in life that sometimes we overlook. God, we get so concerned about what we don't have that we forget to be grateful for what we do have. And God, as we pause here today, we just want to acknowledge that before you, that you created all and you blessed us with everything that we have. God, you are set apart. You are indeed holy, and you have called us to be holy, to be like you. And God, we ask that you would Work that in our lives. Work that mystery. Work the way that the Spirit works. Stir in our hearts a desire to be set apart from this world. To be called out to something different for your sake. Because of your love for us. God, we thank you that you are mighty and powerful. That you can do all of this work in our lives. It's not us. It's not by our strength. It's by your power and your grace and your mercy that you transform us. That you call us forward to be the people that you need us to be. To reach into this lost and hurting world so that we can say we have the answer. We know Jesus and we'd like you to meet him too. God, it's in his mighty and powerful name that we pray. Well, as we come every week, I always like to share some kind of highlight in the ministry work that we do. And, and sometimes we have something that we can show you visually. But this is something that I, I just need to tell you about. Last week, we had all of our children and youth up here blessing them, sending them off into this new school year with our love and our prayers. Send them off with a little token so that they would know that we go with them, that God goes with them. If you're a student or a teacher here and you weren't here last week and you didn't get your little keychain, please come see me. I want to make sure you have that. But one of the things that is important to us here at Rosenberg First is that we take care of our children and our youth. And so something that happens behind the scenes is that our adults who work with our children and our youth go through a training called Ministry Safe. And it is designed so that we can make sure that our children remain safe, that we have systems in place that make sure that they are taken care of. It alerts us to things to look for, to let us know if perhaps they're not in a safe place somewhere else so that we can help. Because every child deserves to be safe and loved and cared for. And so this wonderful program at Ministry Safe is a way that we can offer that to the children of our church and our community. So I just wanted to let you know that we do that. We value our children here. We value creating a safe place for them to come, to feel loved, to learn about God, and to go out and to share that with others. So as the ushers come forward, I would invite you to join in that ministry work. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the blessings that you have given us, that we can return to you now as tithes and offerings. God, whether they come in now in the offering plate or online or in the office during the week, God, we would ask that you would anoint them anew, that you would set them apart 
that you would help us steward our resources well so that we can share your love in this place and beyond these walls. God, help us accomplish our mission to love Jesus, connect with others, serve the world, and reach the lost. We ask these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
train, or he was retired now, but he was a, a train conductor. You know, like really cool stuff. But they're all your family. They're all your cousins. And so that's the kind of feeling that you should have when you come into a place like this. That's the kind of feeling that you should have when you think about God. And, and that's the kind of feeling that he has about us. In Psalm 100, it says this. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. See, we belong to God. That's where we're supposed to be. <coughs> In Isaiah, we read, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. You belong to God. That's where you belong. It answers this question of whose are you? You are God's. You belong to God. That's how it was designed. Because if we look back at the beginning, we see that we were made in the image of God. Genesis 1 and 26 tells us that. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. We are God's. That's what is true. Now, I want to offer a little bit of a nuance that maybe has been clouded. People often say, oh, we're all God's children. We're all God's children. Scripture says we're all made in God's image. But it gives us a definition of who God's children are. We have to know Jesus to be a child of God. John chapter 1, 12 and 13 say this, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Children of God know Jesus. Paul affirms this as well in 1 Corinthians. He says, for you are of Christ, and Christ is of God. We have to know Jesus to be his child. We are all made in God's image. But once you know Christ, you get to claim the name children of God. You know, sometimes we doubt, though, that we belong. We go, okay, yeah, I read all that stuff. I got all that, Wendy. You said all I belong, and it is, well. But sometimes, within us, we go, I don't know that I'm really good enough I don't know that, like, maybe I've done some stuff, and it, maybe I'm not. Maybe I don't truly belong. Other people belong, but I'm just going through the motions. Jesus had lots of people around him who struggled with that. And there's an entire chapter in the Gospel of Luke that addresses this concern. Luke chapter 15. And it starts because he's got all of these people around him, not yet, go back. They're literally in order. <laughs> it's not what he's saying. They're in order. Yeah, that one. There you go. Okay. At the beginning of Luke chapter 15, He's talking to this group of people, and he's been seen eating with sinners and tax collectors. And the Pharisees and the teachers of the law are upset, and they muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And that was just unheard of. That's not what he did. In, in <coughs> Jesus' time, he had to do all the right things to belong. And Jesus is changing things up. He's like, No, that's not how this is. And he tells in Luke. Chapter 
seen a series of stories, a series of parables that say, hey, look, they belong. The first one is the parable of the lost sheep. When one sheep is gone, the shepherd will leave the 99 and go after that one because he wants that one. The next story is the story of the lost coin. When a woman loses a coin, she'll search her whole house through till she finds that one lost coin. And the last story, and perhaps the most well-known story in Luke chapter 15, is the parable of the prodigal son. This is the one that, that is illustrated, that is talked about. This is that story of the father who had two sons. And the one son wanted his inheritance. He wanted it all now. And he took it and he went out. And he tried to live the high life. He tried to do all the things the world told him to do that would be so great and so fun and so amazing. And he blew through everything. And he realized that life wasn't so good. In verse 15, or chapter 15, verse 17, it says, when he came to his senses, when he came to his senses, he realized that what the world was telling him wasn't right. That did not lead him to the good life that he thought it would offer. And so he goes back to his father's house. And it answers this question for us, where do you belong? You belong near God. When we try to go away, looking for things that the world says are awesome, at a certain point, we come to our senses and we come back to the heart of the Father. That's where we belong, is near God. See, the prodigal son knew that something was wrong. Something didn't feel right. He wasn't at home. He wasn't where he needed to be with God. Well, we're not the prodigal son. We didn't, that's not a literal thing for us. But in our world today, we have similar temptations around us. The world is telling us that we need a bigger house and a better car and the newest cell phone, and we have to have all the right pictures on our social media account, and we have to go on all the right vacations. And you can chase after all of that all you want, but it might take you far, far, far away from the Father. And you know, that something's missing, something's not right. That you belong near to God, you belong near to the Father. And one way that we have, that God gave us, that Jesus set up for us to remain near to the Father is to be in fellowship with other believers. To do exactly what we're doing right now is to come together and worship. Church is not an organization to join. It is a family where you belong. Hear that again. Church is not an organization to join. It is a family where you belong. That's what church is supposed to be. And that's why here at Rosenberg First, we don't have members. We have partners. We're a family together doing God's work together. We're all related to each other through the Father. Just as at a family reunion, my granny was the gatekeeper. If you don't know granny, you can get to come, right? If you don't know the Father, then you're not really connected. But when you know the Father, guess what? We're all children of God. We're all brothers and sisters. We're all cousins. We're all related in this family 
that is joined together to follow Jesus, to be near to God. Now, I want to point out the other part of the prodigal son parable. There's that other son, right? That other son who chose to stay home, who didn't ask for his inheritance early, who didn't go out and live the high life and go chasing what the world told him was going to be so exciting. He stayed right where he was. And he kept doing what he'd been called to do in his father's household. And in verse 28, it says this. The older brother became angry and refused to go with him. He didn't want to be part of this celebration of his brother's return. He wanted to sit in judgment of his brother. Right? He's like, dude, you're raised in the same household. Like, you knew the same stuff I did. Like, why did you think that he could go off? Like, God, you were just stupid. He wanted to sit in judgment of him. So he was angry, and he refused to come in. But I think this second brother is this really important part of the story. It's the second part of the parable of the prodigal son that we shouldn't overlook. It's supposed to encourage us to have the heart of the father, not the heart of the son who stayed home. I want to share with you the words of the Father. In verse 31, this is how the Father receives his son. He says, My son, the Father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is That's the heart of the Father, is celebrating the lost who become found. The people who have wandered who find a place of belonging. There's nothing like a family reunion when you see people that you haven't seen for decades. And the joy in your heart to be reunited. That's our challenge today, church, is to create a place where people belong, where they're fully seen, where they're fully known, where they're fully loved. To have the heart of the Father, and to say, this is a place where you belong, because your Father is my Father. And that makes us familiar. So I don't know where you are. I don't know if it's the prodigal son that you identify with. If you've been wandering around seeking what the world tells you you need, and you need to hear the good word that you belong right here, that you belong near the Father. And if that's what you need to hear, then it is a good, good word from Jesus. You are home. Or maybe you've been home here for a long time, and you're that brother who stayed faithful. And it's our turn to say, come on in all those who are lost and hurt. Welcome home. This is a place where you belong. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the words of Luke 15. God, we thank you that Jesus opened his arms wide to all people to tax collectors, to sinners, to prostitutes, to people who the world said weren't worthy. And Jesus said, come home. You belong here. 
and there will be a great celebration when you do. God, allow these words to speak to our heart and help us find a place of home and create a place of belonging for those who are seeking. We ask this in Jesus' name. We're going to move into a time of communion to take this great offering of Jesus' love. And as we prepare our hearts for that, I just invite you into a time of personal prayer to think about what God is saying to you this morning. Which message is he sharing with you? Or maybe it's somewhere in between. But go to the Lord in prayer. I'll gather us together in the words that Jesus taught us when we were prayer. And then we'll move into this time of communion. So take this time to pray. Let the Lord speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit stir inside. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way that you speak to us and move in our life. God, continue to draw us close to you, where you belong. Draw us close to the love of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And so we come with grateful hearts for the broken body and shed blood which was given so that we might be saved through Jesus Christ. And together we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God, we celebrate these gifts of bread and wine with gratitude for the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify them by the Holy Spirit to be for us the body and blood of Christ. Sanctify us also that we may be worthy to receive this holy sacrament of Jesus' most blessed body and blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with others who belong to Jesus and to the family. We ask that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he may be saved. Amen. I'd like to invite those who are serving to come forward. This is an open table, meaning that anyone who feels the call of God to come forward is welcome to receive the love of Jesus. We'll serve by intention, which means we'll place a piece of bread into your cup hands. Cup. 
If you need gluten-free elements, those are going to be over on that side, and you can uh, open those yourself. You will receive that list. Any offerings that are left on the altar will go to the Reach Fund to help us spread the love of Jesus Christ beyond the walls of the church. We'll come forward in two rows, uh, and you can uh, kneel at the altar and continue to spend time with the Lord. If you need the gluten-free elements, then they are going to be over on that corner of the altar. The table is set. Please come.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are indeed family, living members of the body of your Son, and heirs to your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work that you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And as we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, and that family was built on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, I invite you to stand and sing our closing hymn, Victory in Jesus. We will sing verses 1 and 3.
Amen. Amen.